Hello everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy Festag, Seasons Greetings. I'm back in Bristol at my parents' house, which is why the background looks so different, because of the season. I'm here for a couple of days to spend time with my parents. But whilst here, recently I finished a book and I want to talk about it. This book is, of course, A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. And I've, I've got an interesting history with this book. For those of you that don't know, this book is an incredibly famous, towering achievement in modern science communication written by Stephen Hawking. So Hawking, if you somehow don't know this seriously, Hawking was one of the most brilliant physicists and most remarkable stories of 20th century physics. I say most remarkable stories because he did some incredible research and you know, he, he was a great scientist. And I say one of the greatest stories because he overcame some remarkable barriers to do his work. Notably, for a lot of his research career, he was paralysed, almost completely paralysed and unable to talk. So doing his science and writing a book are unbelievable achievements. And the book, A Brief History of Time, is, this is like a very old edition that my parents had, is a sweeping panorama of where we're at in terms of cosmology. So that's the large scale structure of the universe, its evolution and the physics which governs it. So of course, a lot of discussion of Einsteinian relativity, a lot of discussion of Newton, but along the way, we're breezily introduced to pretty much every major revolution in physics history, from quantum mechanics to Newton, Maxwell, the whole shebang. It is an unbelievable work introducing you to modern physics. And I first read it when I was 10. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I first read this, this specific copy actually, when I was 10 years old in year five. And I've always been very dismissive of this fact for a couple of reasons. I basically have always thought in the, the years since then that I read the book as a, a way of showing off. I was like, oh, you, you guys are reading his Dark Materials and Harry Potter. I'm reading the really good stuff. And in those years since reading it, I have basically assumed that I didn't take anything in. I did it as a boast and trying to show that I was somehow better than the other kids in my class and that I just didn't take anything on board. I was going to have forgotten all of it. So when I picked it up recently, as I said I would in the book club like a year ago, I assumed that this would be a completely fresh read for me and that yeah there were a couple of analogies that I vaguely remembered from the first time around but this was all going to be new. And then I opened the book up, read the introduction and everything came back to me. For the record, I very much did, I think, read this in year five as a boast. I'm not arguing with past Simon on that point. But the thing which astonished me was just how much of this I took in. In the sense that I was getting a really weird feeling of nostalgia, that I, I felt like I was 10 years old again when I was being introduced to some of these concepts in this book, like the introduction to quantum mechanics. So just before this excerpt, Hawking is talking about the ultraviolet catastrophe, this idea that if a body radiates uh, it, all fre frequencies equally uh, when it's at a particular temperature, that it radiates an infinite amount of energy, which is obviously ridiculous. In order to avoid this obviously ridiculous result, the German scientist Max Planck suggested in 1900 that light, x-rays and other ways could not be emitted at an arbitrary rate, but only in certain packets that he called quanta. Moreover, each quantum had a certain amount of energy that was greater the higher the frequency of the waves. So at a high enough frequency, the emission of a single quantum would require more energy than was available. Thus, the radiation at high frequencies would be reduced, and so the rate at which the body lost energy would be finite. That is such a tight, tightly worded explanation of what quantum mechanics is and where it came from. And reading it the second time, I felt that kind of rush of enthusiasm of, oh my god, that's so simple but so cool. But now, with the benefit of, you know, a physics degree and the PhD, it's, it's like attacking a, a, a piece of art. First as a child and having that sense of wonder, but then going back and maybe having an art degree or years of you know, experience in the field, going back and looking at the same painting and you feel a connection with your older self, but also a new appreciation of the work. And that was how I felt about this entire book. Because in rereading it, I was able to look back at my younger self and see the, what made young Simon interested in physics. And it, it, was, it was literally like a revelation that I realized this book the, a Brief History of Time was what made me go on to do a physics degree. It was what got me interested in the physical world and describing it mathematically. It was almost like discovering a missing link that I kind of just thought this, this idea had always been there. I didn't really have any direct evidence. There wasn't a particular thing I could point to that made me want to do a physics degree. But now, I know what it is. And I know it's this. So that's my personal kind of connection to the book. To give an actual kind of book 
review. It is quite slender. It's, it's what, like 170 odd pages of actual content. Each chapter is a very neat kind of size. It's digestible. Uh, you can sit down afterwards and sort of think about what you've read. And I'm really keen to get Pixel Girl, my girlfriend, who is a linguist, to read the first chapter of this because I think it is the best introduction to modern physics and explaining what physics is, how it works, and vaguely what the different subgroups of physics behave like. I, I can't think of anything better as an introduction than the introduction of this book. Admittedly, I am an atmospheric physicist by training and Hawking was a cosmologist, so very different fields. So when I was rereading it, there was a lot of stuff which I had either forgotten from my degree or I had just not really covered because cosmology is, is quite a big subject. So there were a lot of nuggets in here which I found particularly interesting and, you know, excited my childish curiosity again. Although this was written in 1988. So, 30 years on, the research in this is going to be a wee bit, just, just, just a wee bit out of date. And I think I'm going to have to pick up his latest book, well, his, his last book, to get a more updated version of the field. So, to me at least, this was full of new pieces of information. It was the connection to the childish version of me, so I loved it in that sense. But also, it is just so slickly written. It is so easy to understand. And honestly, the, I think the probably the best introduction to physics from a pop science um, way of attacking the subject. I think it, this is in a way a companion piece to Six Easy Pieces by Richard Feynman. Six Easy Pieces attacks the subject with a little bit more maths to it. This only has, I think, E equals MC squared in it. So there's basically no maths in this whatsoever. I think there's a certain amount of um, pleasure taken in criticising a book like this. And I think that was how I felt about it in the, the past couple of years, that it is just known as one of these absolute classics. And, you know, it's kind of cool in a way to hate on it, in the same way that people might be uh, try and be edgy by saying they that they watched Star Wars out, it wasn't that good, or, I don't know, I listened to whatever it is, say the greatest piece of music ever written, Bach's massive B minor, and they're like, yeah, it was good, I don't know, but like, <sighs> there are other better ones out there. I feel like I have been victim of doing this with this book because I think the past couple of years I have said to people, ah, it's a bit overrated, it's not that good. But that was based on my childish read of it and the fact that I think I resented myself a little bit for deciding to read it at a young age for stupid reasons. Having come back as an adult and read it, I can say very definitively, this is a classic for a reason. It is a fantastic example of science communication. If you're a physicist, then you would do well to go back and reread this and hopefully, like me, rediscover that kind of spark that got you into physics. And if you're a, a younger person watching this, if you're a student and you're thinking of maybe doing physics at university, you want to see what it's vaguely like, you should read this. Maybe don't read this if you're 10. I mean, admittedly, like, I kind of did well out of it, but I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. Now, if you have a different opinion, if you think, like I did, that this is overrated and there are better ones out there, I would very much encourage you to comment below this video and tell me what you think is the best introduction to physics. I'm kind of putting six easy pieces and a brief history of time together, but if you think there's a better one out there, let me know. Now, to round off the video, when I've done single book reviews before in the book club, I've always said what I'm going to be reading next. And we try to alternate between fiction and non-fiction. But I am reading outside the book club now, um, and so I'm actually going to cheat and put in another non-fiction book. But it's one that people have been asking for for ages, so if you'd like to read along with me over the next six weeks to two months, I am going to be reading Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari, the sequel to the fantastically popular Sapiens, which I have reviewed on this channel channel in the book club. I'm going to be reading that and I would encourage you to do the same because from what I hear it's going to be quite something. So that's what I'm going to be reading next. You can check out everything I'm reading by the way on my Goodreads profile link in the description along with links to this book and to Homo Deus which are full disclosure affiliate links so if you buy something from them I get a kickback from it and hopefully you also get a really good book. Thank you very much for watching this video. Do comment below if you have a suggestion for what you think the best introduction to physics is in book form if it's not this or Six Easy Pieces. Thank you again for watching the video. Pop it a like if you thought it was interesting. You can subscribe to this channel for more, mostly not book videos, but there will be book videos, and share it with people that you think might enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.